Well, welcome to round seven of the BFO Belgian Rally Championship, the East Belgian Rally from Sonvik, not far from Spa. And um, we're going to be seeing some great racing action here today. It's very, very wet indeed and uh, challenging for all the drivers. This is Peter Schoen, leader in the championship, talking about potentially wrapping it up today. And uh, Peter says, I think it will be difficult with Alexander Roman, my main competitor. Um, he cannot finish in the top two if I want to be champion, but I don't really see anyone who can be a threat to him for second place. This is Alexander Roman's car team car to Peter Schoen. Uh, he missed the last round of the championship, though. And Alexander says everything's possible before the race, nor Peter nor I can afford to make any mistakes. So both of us have to make it to the line if we want to be champion. But if he, Peter finishes the last two races, there's two more races to go in the series, it will be difficult to, uh, to beat him for the title. Well, this is Jonas Langenhaken's already champion in Group N. And his main competition isn't here this weekend, so he has wrapped it up. And Jonas says, we're very glad that we won the championship for today. Uh, I want to have a good result, really just to make it that little bit more special. So the beautiful picturesque countryside here in the uh, in the east of Belgium, the spectators coming out despite the rain. It's uh, a little bit horrid out there today, cold and very wet indeed. We're on board with Alexander Roman. We're the Citroen C4 WRC car very very fast piece of kit this is Alexander's first year in the car as well very narrow stages lots of tree lined roads and incredibly difficult as well very very slippery it's going to get uh, worse I think as the day goes on as well because it's going to drag a lot of mud around this uh, uh, this circuit here in Belgium so that was Alexander this is Peter Schoen hoping for his seventh title if he does wrap it up today it's a bit of a long shot that he's got to wrap it up today but if he does manage to do it he'll tie Patrick Snayers from Belgium as being the most successful ever he started very very quickly indeed and another man that did as well local guy Sebastian Sturbos with the Toyota Corolla WRC you just saw that car go around there he used to drive a Toyota Yaris uh, so one of the slower cars to one of the faster ones this is Pete Van Hoof with the Mitsubishi Group A car still teeming it down with rain here making it very very difficult for all the drivers on the early stages but a very very nice place indeed for a motor brace this is Jonas Langenhag as we heard from him earlier on he's in the lead in Group N and he's fourth place overall after the first couple of stages and the amazing thing as well we always see this with Jonas he's such a good driver he's only four seconds behind the WRC cars which are the faster uh, turbo rally cars so uh, great day for him so far Let's see how that continues. This is Chris de Beza, uh, in the Porsche GT3 that normally drives in historic rallying. And uh, he's got this car as well and fancied a spin out in this this weekend. So we're hearing from Chris now. And the interviewer said, how was your position? He said, I think we're somewhere around 40th place. So we've got one advantage. We can only move forward. Uh, the interviewer says, are the stages nice or difficult? He says, I think they're nice and difficult. I think this is race is one of the nicest in Belgium. I uh, ran this race last year in dry conditions and I had a really good time with my Ford Escort in historic in the historic class. Now with the Porsche, it'll be more difficult due to the weather. But for me, it's one of the nicest in Belgium. OK, that very, very cool looking BMW Z4. Gino Kennis used to race in Rallycross, but decided to go rallying now. A car he built all himself and a really, really nice to see uh, a different kind of car in the GT class. And this is Tim Van Perez back in the Porsche GT3. And uh, Tim does race a few different cars. Must be quite difficult getting used to all of them, but uh, the rear wheel drive Porsche having fun slinging it around in the mud and the rain here in Belgium. That was a little bit wild as well. So we're here from Tim now and he says, we're uh, trying to drive a very clean race because the weather is not ideal for us. Uh, in the second and third stage, we had the problem with the demister on the front window. Uh, we had to drive uh, without being able to see out the window and it was completely misted. So we lost a lot of time. Well, this is number 11 Cleo of Eric Maffrey from France in the R3 class. Great to see a mix of cars. Number 37 Subaru of uh, Ferdi Bechevel, and he's in 10th place overall at the moment. Ninth place, another Clio of uh, Bruno Blaise. And this is uh, 
it's amazing to see the weather really is a great lever. All the high horsepower cars can't go quite as fast, can't stretch out the advantage like they normally would. So would you believe ninth overall um, on the stages so far is a little Renault Clio. Eighth place, Hern Jonkers from the Netherlands with uh, an older Group A style Mitsubishi. taking it very very easy indeed but that's what everybody maybe has to do today uh, just to survive till the end of all the stages well this is Cedric Tseko and he's currently third in group N this is his first time uh, with the group N Mitsubishi and his first time with a 4x4 as well so, Jonas Langen-Harkens as well, having a bit of a problem with his Mitsubishi, and the interviewer says what happened. He said in the third stage it was raining very, very hard. I got surprised in a very slippery braking zone. We went through a fence, uh, broke the front window, but in the end it wasn't too bad. Uh, we did lose, but we did lose about 40 seconds. Well, I'm actually amazed he only lost 40 seconds, to be honest with you. That sounded quite nasty. So, Cedric Sharan in the McGann is first in Group N. Front wheel drive only for that car, so he's doing a great job in the slippery, wet conditions. This is Andy Lefebvre with the uh, homemade BMW M3. He's in fourth overall, third place for Sturbus. After three stages in the older Toyota Corolla WRC car, but still a great effort for the local guy. Third overall is no mean feat at all, no matter how old the car is. Very competitive, though, obviously. And we're on board with the number two man, Alexander Roman. And a big moment there for Alexander Roman. Just manages to hang on to it and uh, gets way out of shape. And our interviewer caught up with Alexander just after that. And he said, after the first two stages, we're in the lead, but only just. In the third stage, we had a slight ma mistake where uh, I aquaplaned and I slightly hit a fence. Uh, we lost about 10 seconds. I'm amazed he only lost 10 seconds, to be honest with you. He nearly lost his lunch as well, I'd have thought. Anyway, first is Peter Schoen. And uh, after that mistake from Alexander as well, pulling out a bit of a lead. And he says, in the first stages, I did not have a good feeling at all. My tyres were much too hard and I couldn't get any temperature in them. So on the last two stages, it was a bit better, but I think we'll have to change tyres because at the moment, I don't have enough confidence in the car. So the results after the first three stages, Peter Schoen is in the lead, but only by 11 seconds from Alexander Roman, his main contender. So, well, we're back on with stage four. You can see very slippery indeed. Even the master himself, Peter Schoen, manages to completely get it sideways uh, around that corner there and collects a little bit of grass as well on his way. And Alexander Roman, he was actually in the lead on the first two stages, but only 0.03 of a second. So just the smallest, smallest margin out there. We're going to get some on board, more on board action with Alexander again. You can see him fighting the car all the way through. That steering will never stay still. It's going from one side to the other. Spends his entire time just correcting every single little slip and slide. And doing very well at it as well. This is number 23 car of Martin van Lessem. And a Mitsubishi Evo 10, not everyone controls it quite as well as he slides quite gracefully into the fence and then up the bank on the other side. Those spectators get a little better view than they think they were going to at the start of the day. Well, on to the GT cars. And uh, this is Chris DeBrizzo. We heard from Chris earlier on. He's actually moved up to 34th spot overall and fifth place in the GT class. Very difficult for these cars anyway. Porsches on the road are difficult to drive it in the wet, but with the, uh, the wet and the mud and everything else as well, uh, a rear-wheel drive rear-engine Porsche must be pretty damn hard to handle, to be honest with you. Third place so far, the BMW uh, Z4, that's Gino Kennis. 
controlling it very nicely indeed, but again, rear wheel drive, really, really tough to control in these slippery conditions. Must admit, it does look quite good fun though. And another Porsche this time round, Francis Eugene. Really striking looking paint job on that Porsche. And he's second overall in the GT3 class, but the leader after the first few stages at the moment for the GT boys going to be Tim Van Perez coming up just shortly. And that's the man himself, Tim Van Perez. We normally see him, like I said, in an array of cars. We've seen him in uh, WRC car a couple of times during the year as well. This time back in his trusty GT3. And obviously having a great time too, being in the lead in the class. And we're going to catch up with him now, find out how his day's going. The interviewer said, Tim, how's it going with the Porsche in these terrible conditions? And he says, well, that's the right word, terrible. The car suffers a lot from aquaplaning because we have very large tyres on the rear. Uh, we're trying to catch up with the guys in the front and we had some good times. We already closed 30 seconds of the gap with uh, Andy Lefebvre, who's in front of us. Uh, we'll try and get him back on the last stage, but I did make some mistakes and I lost some time, so it will be tough. And the interviewer says, how will it be uh, starting to get a bit dark? That's going to be tough. And he said, well, it won't be good for us because I'm not that good of a driver in the dark. But most of all, the conditions are getting worse and worse. It's impossible to drive in. Well, as the spectators walk around to the next stages, please join us again in part two, where we wrap it up. Well, welcome back to part two of the second to last race of the Belgium Rally Championship for 2011, the BFO Belgium Rally Championship. And uh, after eight stages, Cedric Tzeko is in sixth place overall with the Bitsi, Mitsubishi. Uh, last year's champ in the Fiesta Trophy doing very, very well indeed with this car. Jonas Langenhagen, sixth overall. Now, I must admit, would expect expected to see him higher with the Group N. Uh, Mitsubishi having a good battle with the Seco, and there's only 20 seconds between them at the moment. Jonas driving uh, a very, very cool, calm and collected race. He is already the Group N champion for this summer. And the only thing that's got in the way of Jonas so far this year uh, is the occasional mechanical problem. Everything else, including his driving, has been absolutely spot on. So the interviewer says to Jonas, how's it going in the conditions? He says, well, we will try and deal with the elements, but it's quite OK. We drive our own place and try to maintain our second place in the class. And the interviewer says, will it be possible to catch up with Sharan in the dark? And Sharan's in the lead in Group N. He said, I think it'll be possible, uh, but we'll try and secure our position. Considering the circumstances, we'll use our heads and not take too many risks. And how dangerous are the stages? Uh, he said everywhere it's very dangerous, especially uh, when we went the second time round. Uh, there was a lot of mud and rocks on the road and it was very slippery. Well, this is Andy Lefebvre with the BMW that we were just talking about there with uh, uh, Jonas catching him. Doing very well overall. He's not normally so good in the wet weather, but having a great day so far. Really nice to see a different car and an older style car as well getting on top here in the standings. Well, fourth position overall in the rally, but the leader of Group N, Cedric Chiran, with a front-wheel drive only, Renault Medecan having a great day here. Est-ce qu'il va pour le podium? And the interviewer says, are you going for the podium? And he said, well, when everything is normal, no. Uh, the guys in front of us have really good cars. Uh, they are WRC cars. Uh, we have a very good Group N car. We'll just have to see after the next stages. But our goal is win to win the Group N class. But you have fun? And he says, yeah, it's super. We're like a fish in water.
<laughs> really nice to see someone very, very happy indeed about their rally. And so this is Sebastian Sturbos in third place, but a huge five minutes behind the leader. Second at the moment, Alexander Roman, just over 30 seconds behind Peter Shirley's main championship rival. And today's the day he's got to do some catching up. Even though the conditions are very tricky and very tough, Alexander doing his absolute best to try and claw it back. It's been a great battle all summer between the two guys with the, uh, the Citroens. Unfortunately for Alexander, he had to miss the last round of the championship. It's really going to hurt his chances. But he needs to keep the pressure on his teammate, Peter Schoen, this weekend. And Alexander says 32 seconds behind Peter at the moment. Uh, it's almost impossible to catch up. Peter makes almost no mistakes. He's used to controlling the race, and you can see just how much experience he has. But on the other hand, 30 seconds isn't so much. Uh, there are five more stages to go, and you'll never know. We'll keep our rhythm high and fast, and if he makes a mistake, we'll be there. Uh, and let's just hope we don't make any mistakes. Well, the man he's talking about, this guy here, Peter Schoen, leading the race. And uh, he normally drives very fast, makes no mistakes at all. Or very little mistakes anyway. He's already had, uh, I think it's four championship wins out of seven so far this summer. And we're going to catch up with Peter now to get his thoughts. And he said, I think it's a bit more than difficult just making no mistakes. Uh, we didn't really make any mistakes at all so far. And I think Alexander made some small ones. And that explains the difference uh, between us two in time. And the interviewer said, how difficult is it in these conditions? He said, yeah, it's very hard. We have an average speed of about 120 kilometers an hour on these very, very narrow roads. There's mud everywhere, so you can't make, you can make mistakes in almost every place. As a result of that, you have to be very focused, have confidence in the pace load and the co-driver. And so far, so good. Well, after eight stages, Peter Schoen in the lead. Alexander Roman now 36 seconds behind, but the three, four and five places very close together indeed. So time to wrap it up for today's rally. We go to the historic cars. First of all, the really, really cool looking older cars here in Belgium. This is the fifth place man, Glenn Janssens with the Porsche. Rear wheel drive rear engine cars in these conditions must be a Real good fun to drive. Anyway, fourth place, the escort of Dirk DeVoe. It's just like going back about 35 years, isn't it, really? In third, the very, very unique BMW, Ter van der Aubler. This year's champ for the historic cars in Belgium. Look at all those marbles as well. It really has got a lot rougher as the day's gone on. Cars dragging round, more water, more mud and more rocks onto the racetrack as more of them put their wheels in the dirt. So uh, second was Vincent Verschuren with an Opel Ascona. Again, sounding exactly like it used to do in days gone by. But the winner, Rainer Herman, another one of those local racers, knows the area very, very well indeed. You can see he's got a lot of local support as well. And he dominated with the historic cars today. So we got two Skoda Fabia R2s as well. In second place, Jean Bier van der Waal with that very cool little Skoda. And the winner was Matthias Boone. And that wraps it up for that particular class. As you can see, the uh, it's getting darker. It's getting later on in the day. The rally will finish in the dark. This is Tim Van Peris 
uh, with no back end on his Porsche. You can actually see the exhaust glowing red in the darkness as well. Um, six overall as well. This is um, Sturbus who unfortunately had to quit on the final stage, or one of the final stages after being third overall. Great shame for him. The number 18 Clio of Bruno Barza was fifth. Unbelievably for the little Clio. What a fantastic result for him. And uh, in the darkness there, that's Cedric De Secco, fourth overall in his first ever race with the Mitsubishi Evo. Now, story of the day. It really was tight at the end. Alexander Romain was gaining on Peter Schoen because Peter had trouble with his headlights on the final stage and he went off, got stuck and couldn't get going again. So it was Peter Schoen with, uh, with a puncture and uh, not working headlights who limped round to the end of the race and would get the win. That's Jonas Langenharkens. He finished third overall and second in Group N. Fabulous result for him, just not quite as fabulous as Cedric Sarang. Second overall and first in Group N with a front-wheel drive car, would you believe? So, this is Cedric, and he said, we found a very good setup for the car. We've really evolved it during the season. Now the settings are very good. Um, we've got a great performing car. So this is the secret to why we're so fast. And the interviewer says, in a couple of weeks, the Condros rally? And he says, yes, the Condros. That's the reason I live in. So uh, it's a rally that I know very well. And now we've got a lot of confidence during this race. So we'll go to the Condros rally very well prepared. Well, after battling the whole day, and through all the problems as well, Peter Schoen took the win. It shows that consistency does win races. His main contender, Alexander Roman, unfortunately went out. It's a huge, huge shame for him. But Peter Schoen, not only does he take the event win, he wraps up his seventh ever title. And a very happy looking Peter Schoen says, it was a real thrill of a race and I didn't ride it myself. I thought before the last stage, it would have been difficult to keep the first place. Uh, we only had two likes, and even those two weren't working perfectly. My sight really wasn't good enough to drive fast, uh, but the rally is never finished. And suddenly I saw Alexander on the side of the road, and then I knew I had a good chance to win. And how is it to take your seventh title? He said, yeah, it's very good. It was our goal at the start of the season. We have five wins now. And we equaled the record of Patrick Snayers, who also has seven titles. Uh, maybe you have to keep it in seven so Patrick stays a legend in Belgium. But seven titles with Patrick does sound nice. So the results, it was Peter Schoen out there in front, but Cedric Saran, fantastic result. Front wheel drive and group in second overall. Well, that really was a superb result for Cedric Sharan. Front-wheel drive car, only a front-wheel drive car as well. And Group N finishing second overall. Great result for him. Been racing in the IRC this year, and all that practice really has improved his driving. Next up is the Condros Rally. That's it for the East of Belgium Rally. One more round to go before the season's over. We hope to see you then in a couple of weekends' time. Thanks for joining us.